Right, second video on the series on this thing here. So the whole idea behind this uh, video series is to make the most practical vehicle that we think is possible. If you saw the last episode, we're using this four motion ice blue uh, combi. Quick update on people asking about the full sliders. So um, we, we put this in the last episode, I'm still not happy with them. So everything's right about them, the way they look, the way the mechanism works, but I'm still not happy with the way they drain. And it's all to do with once you open the window, the water that's on the inside of the window, how that's going to drain out. So a few more design tweaks. I'm not going to put these windows out until I am 100% happy that they're spot on. So just bear with us on it. We're 99% of the way there, but a bit more delay until we've got this absolutely spot on. So uh, not going to cause any issues in the future. Next up, where are we going to go with this thing? This is the best bit for me. This is the bit where we get to make it look nice. Just looks like a fairly boring commercial panel van. Got to have the suspension and wheels next, isn't it? We touched briefly uh, in the last episode on the fuel wheel, the 18 inch fuel wheel, which was originally the plan. Having thought about it loads, off of the wheel up and stewed on it quite a bit, I've kind of decided against it. And it's because I'm not sure on the bronze with the richness of the blue with this one. So we're going to go for a different wheel, but we'll show you that at the end. A lot of people are going to hate this, but I'm going to lower this thing. And my reasoning behind this is to make it practical, lifting it's great. And there's a definitely a big market for the lifted thing, especially with the four motions. But even when you lower these things, as long as you don't lower them silly, they're still practical. There's still loads of clearance. It's a van at the end of the day. Underneath that van is loads of room. Even when you lower it, it's a sensible amount. You haven't got to worry about speed bumps. You haven't got to worry about driving across campsites. You haven't got to worry about car park curbs. There's still lots of room. So we're going to lower it a sensible amount. Still go with the AT wheels to go with the foot, the full motion. But we've got something a little bit special for suspension on this one. So this is total overkill. So a bit more about this suspension. So anyway, I'll take you in and show you the suspension. So you would have seen us briefly show you this suspension if you've seen any of our Tesla build videos. So what we've got here, so this vehicle is a T32. So what Bilstein did for us, they built us some bespoke suspension to go on the electric van. And this is a B16. So I've got B16s in an old classic Porsche, classic Porsche and they're amazing. They're as good as it possibly gets because it's a monotube setup. So they made us a set for the electric van for a T30, but they also made us a set for a T32. And the reason being is we want to test these, put a load of miles on them and make sure we're comfortable with them before we start throwing them on an electric van that's going to be doing silly speeds and throw hair around the Nürburgring. One offs or two offs because there's a T32 and a T30 set made specifically for us, but it's monotube. So there is currently no monotube suspension for a T6. It's all high-end race car stuff, and it's just to do with the technology involved in making them, the bigger pistons and, and the, the weight and the sway of a big vehicle like a uh, transporter. It's never really been possible as such in this platform and for this type of vehicle because of its size uh, until now. Um, technology's evolved and Bilstein have been able to develop this, so hopefully we can get this working uh, on this van and then we can put on the, the Tesla build on the electric van. So why is a monotube suspension better than a twin tube? Currently, not a lot of people know this anyway, but Bilstein already use uh, monotube rear dampers, but not for the front. I don't think anybody else does. No other suspension I'm aware of use a monotube rear. What happens, what's really common in the suspension world is the, the big brands work together. So you'll find a lot of the time that Bilstein will make dampers, I back on H&R make the springs and vice, they'll, they'll do it for each other. So the H&R damper that you quite often see has got all built on internals. Built on don't make springs. They get I back and H&R to make them because they're the, the, the best at what they do. And um, you know, I back are kind of really high end. If you speak to the German guys, I back are like the, the best of the best when it comes to spring making. Um, so that's what we've got going on this. And that's what we've got going on the Tesla build. And that's what goes on a lot of the kits that come out now, like the B14 Comfort and uh, yeah, so they use an eye back spring. So what's so special about this B16 setup or PPS 10 setup that we're going to have the privilege to put on this vehicle? Well, it's fully adjustable dampening externally. So it has an independent adjustable system on the front and the rear damper that allows you to adjust the dampening rate after the the suspension's already been fitted, which there is nothing else like that on the market currently. So this will have a very similar kind of drop to a standard B14. So the di dimensionally it's very similar. So it'll be around sort of 70 mil at the, the lower setting, which is all we need. We don't want to go too low on this, obviously, because it's full motion and we're putting big wheels on it. And the same with the uh, electric van. We can't go too low because the way the, the Tesla motor's mounted at the bottom, um, it sits really low. So if we go too low with it, it's going to sc scrape a Tesla motor on the ground. So we don't really want to drop it uh, too much but we'll get the right size wheel and tire to make it fill the arch out. So with a monotube, you get to have a larger diameter piston and that gives you an overall smoother ride than you would do out of a, a twin tube system. So a monotube suspension also has a separate gas chamber, which keeps the oil under constant pressure all the time, which helps improve performance and reduces fade, which is normally more noticeable on twin tube dampening. There you go. 
Can you tell I read that from some notes? So I've never memorised all that. But anyway, in theory, it should be the absolute dog's danglers of suspension. I mean, if Wilson ever produced it, this thing would be stupidly expensive, but we get the privilege of being able to put it on this um, and then test it on this, put some miles on this. We've got a few long trips planned in this to try and test it out. So it's going to Wales this weekend, Scotland the following weekend, and then I've got a trip over to Europe as and when we're allowed just to try and put some miles on it. Yeah, there we go. Then we're going to finish this off with some nice details, put the arch trims on it um, and just give it a bit more of a nicer look. So next up, let's pull it inside, hand it over to Josh. He's going to get it on the ramp, get this thing lowered, get the wheels on it, get the trims on it. and. Uh, that's exterior stage one complete, I think. So loads of people are going to disagree with this, but as I said, I think this is the most practical way to make a vehicle. So I like lowering stuff. I also like lifting stuff, but this is, so it's the whole car park thing and just the way they drive and the comfort of being able to lower a vehicle on quality coilovers. You don't get that if you put them on cheap coilovers or just standard lowering springs, but you go quality coilovers um, and you'll notice a massive difference in the, the ride quality. And I think it can look really good. So this is lowered about 80 mil. So, uh, these dampers, we, so we use the V14 Comfort springs on this one. This wouldn't be ideally what we'd put on it and it's not what we're going to put on the Tesla build, but it was to give us an idea of how we think they were going to sit at about an 80 mil drop. For those of you that want to get that kind of 80 mil, because there's not really anything there at the moment in between the sort of Solo and V14, we are working on like a Solo mid, uh, which will sit somewhere in between the two. So you can have the Solo Comfort and sit slightly higher than a Solo, but slightly lower than a V14. But yeah, so this is, what would be a B16 monotube setup as we showed you before. I've just taken this out for a drive and it's 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 brilliant, <laughs> really good. Built on ever put this into production, it would be really expensive. I've got a, um, the V16s on an old Porsche and I think they're like two and a half grand, so real high end stuff. We just drove up and down the road, me and Mikey, and we were adjusting the firmness and it was nice to be able to just pull over, sit underneath the van, turn a dial, and then just how firm and soft it was uh, on the ride and this is a really bumpy road on the way in here and it was really noticeable on the difference between the journey out and the journey back but anyway there you go so done so what have we done here so we've done this is about an 80 mil drop like i said probably lower than you would normally go if you were going for b14s you'd have a 70 mil drop and this is as low as you can possibly get with this wheel and tire combo uh, without starting to get any rubbing issues so we've gone for this tire package because well a few reasons one this is going to be a rental vehicle one of that bit of extra tire so less likely to be curbed we went for i'll take you in closer the 18 inch swim monitor project at wheel so this bead here is removable so if it was to be curbed you can just undo all these bolts it comes with a tool to do it and send that bead off to be painted again so the tire 2355518 and that's a 104 rating so it's absolutely fine for a t32 this tire just lifts it that little bit higher back off the ground again to give us the clearance that we wanted so this has got this is about 13 mil this tire profile makes the wheel about 13 mil higher lifted than it would do off a standard tire and also that you lose 13 mil of the uh, arch gap by going for this tire so you can't um adjust the speedo yet on a t6.1 nobody's figured out how to do it so this is going to throw your speedo out by about three percent so not loads if you think of all those people that are running two 7540s which is the wrong size tire but so many people seem to run them because they come cheap on tire packages that's like six percent out on the speedo so this one here to give you an idea is going to throw the speedo out by about three percent so i was just checking the mass on that one there yeah so about three percent so to, to, to give you an idea over at davenport so if you were doing 60 mile an hour this is going to say you're doing about 58 mile an hour so it's not a million miles out and not enough for a concern new new number plate same plate but just spaced differently a little bit naughty i know but 86 one mud but nice gel plates just to finish it off a little bit nicer so drives really nice 
I think it looks well. Stage two complete. Hopefully that video was useful. Next video will be light upgrade. So we've got new headlights coming for these. I haven't had the samples through yet, but we're going to show you what you can do if you've got standard lights like these, just to help improve your output and the look a little bit of the yellowiness of the bulb. So fog light bulb switch out and uh, LED headlight bulbs and side repeaters. So uh, loads of other cool stuff coming for this. Um, there'll be quite a few episodes to feature. We've got the new Avano dog edition bed they're making, especially for this. Uh, new headlining going in, insulation, van shades, um, something special with the, the side panels instead of carpet lining there. But we'll, um, we'll run you through that as we do it. Powder coated black bike rack as well. We'll show you that one. Again, goal is all about trying to make something that's really practical and really usable. Uh, and I think this is. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, if you've liked it, please do hit the like button. Uh, share it with anybody else that might be interested in this look or any look or share our channel if you can always appreciate it when you subscribe click the little bell to get the notification when we bring out a new video and as always thanks for watching <music>